it has been quite a while since we've made a waterfowl hunting video and finally the time has come as Nicole and I make our way north to a dairy farm with a goose problem. This is what you call an adventure hunt. We'll not only be passing through some beautiful locations on our way to our hunting grounds but we'll also be facing some pretty rough weather conditions with strong winds and relentless rain and at the end of the day camping in the mountains in these crazy conditions. Today's episode features some goose control and we'll be using the good old 22250 Remington shooting 50 grain nozzle ballistic tips at 3800 feet per second from a Ticket T3 topped off with an Element Helix 4 to 16 first focal plane. In the episodes to follow we'll be switching to a variety of PCP air guns to take out more problem birds in the form of doves and sparrows and some ground squirrels to end it all off. This is going to be a pretty long video so if you want to skip to the first shot check the index in the video description but I have to show you how we got to this property because that was an adventure in itself. Traveling north from our house Nicole and I spent a few hours on a tar road before heading off the beaten tracks and making our way up a rural mountain pass to a town called Hogsback. As we gain altitude, we suddenly find ourselves in the thick Amatola rainforest. The town of Hogsback will be a stopover point on our way to the hunt. It's an old town that is heavily inspired by Lord of the Rings author J.R.R. Tolkien, who was born in South Africa, and this is really one of my favorite places to visit. You can feel the magic here, especially in the fog when you feel like you aren't really in Africa at all. <laughs> It was fun spending a night in Hogsback, but eventually it was time to leave our forest paradise and head north once more towards our hunting spot. We took a bit of a scenic detour, intentionally obviously, which took us through some more forests, past some mountains and onto a gravel road. Now just watch here how quickly the trees disappear and are replaced with grassland. It's pretty insane how fast the landscape changes. 10 minutes after leaving Hogsback, we are in open high altitude grassland and then another 10 minutes later, we're on a national road with yet another change of scenery. Eventually though, we arrive at our destination, a pretty large dairy farm with pivots that host Egyptian geese and guinea fowl and dams where other waterfowl like spurwing geese, yellow bull ducks and red bull teals can be hunted. No, gross, Tom. Well, this could be a, a long three days of hunting. We've literally chosen the worst time of the year. Um, three days of non-stop rain is what is forecast. So walking around and shooting, I don't really want to get my gun soaked with water. So it's kind of out of the question and cameras as well. We have to keep those dry. So it's going to be difficult. Um, right now we're just driving around and getting our bearings. That's hunting for you. You never really know how it's going to turn out. To start things off, we head to one of these dams and immediately spot some ducks and teals. These aren't pests here, but there are a massive abundance of them and we've been given permission to shoot a few for food. The yellow bull ducks are slightly larger than the teals, but they are very similar and both taste really good. And as we discovered, for some reason, they are not in the least afraid of the drone. It's weird, right? With the rain bucketing down, I spot a duck nice and close and prepare for a shot, aiming high to preserve as much meat as possible. Okay, that was it. Got one shot at them. Unfortunately, they flew off, but first one down, oh, this rain is miserable. I can see little spots of water on my scope cam footage and cameras are getting wet, guns are getting wet. We have to make sure that the stuff doesn't rust over the next few days but miserable conditions worst possible conditions for hunting but hey at least we got something down let's pop out the awning and just sit and uh, have a cup of coffee or something wait for the the rain to die down unfortunately that is uh, just what it's going to be like and we've we've driven many hours to get here so no point turning back now thankfully the duck is fairly easy to retrieve just off on a bank 
but while we wait for the rain to pass, it's time for some coffee. Well, thank goodness we do have a vehicle that's kitted out for this. Um, if we didn't, I think we might as well just have gone home or found something else to do in this area because hunting in this rain, um, it's not pleasant at all. And we, we wouldn't have been prepared for it otherwise. But with this, we can kind of sit out here, wait it out, make some coffee, maybe make some lunch. And if we spot any action on the, the water, we can get the rifle out and carry on where we left off. But let's get the kettle out and make some coffee, shall we? I'll be honest, with heavy rain forecast for the next few days, the thought passed my mind that perhaps we had made a mistake even coming out here. Was it really worth putting all my camera equipment at risk? And would we get enough footage to make it worthwhile? As you'll find out, the answer to both of those questions is a resounding yes. People coming in, love. Okay, we're back in business. Which way is the wind coming from? That way. It's coming from like directly in front of you. Yeah. Okay. I see this shot passing way high and it dawns on me that my rangefinder may be struggling to give me the reading I need. It's so, so, so close. But the difficulty with ranging at those relatively long distances on the water is that your rangefinder, you know, you've got an angle like this, let's say, and the range, you're ranging like this. So your, your, air, your air of parallax, if you are just slightly higher or slightly lower than that bird, um, your range is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, even 100 meters off. Plus those birds are sometimes moving or there's an illusion of them moving because the water's being blown to one side and even if the bird's staying in the same place it looks like the bird's moving in relation to the water so it is a challenge and we've missed a couple but i've got 50 rounds to burn so <laughs> i don't mind that I'd rather take some shots and miss than just sit here doing nothing all day under the awning with the rain coming down and we've seen we're starting to see some movement now um, and it looks like the sky is getting a bit lighter, so hopefully the rain stops or at least um, quietens down for a bit. And we see some bird movement, maybe they'll come back out onto the water and we can get another chance. But yep, way too many birds here. It's a big problem and uh, I'm very happy to help out. Another yellowbill duck lands nice and close, but in my excitement I rush this one yet again and take the shot as the bird dips back down. Just goes to show, even with a laser beam of a rifle, hunting is never straightforward and even with my experience I still make mistakes. All the time. It looks unforgivable but in real time you can see just how quickly this plays out and my reflexes are simply just not fast enough. Don't be joking! <sighs> Don't know how I missed that. So what happened there was, I think two things. Um, number one, I've been shooting with a front sandbag but no rear support, only my hand and um, so I don't quite have the control that I would like, especially for a target that's moving a bit. Um, and the second thing was I saw that bird lift up and flap and that was, I was very tempted to just to basically rush the shot having a bit more surface area as the bird stood up. And I rushed it and I pulled the trigger a bit late as he came down and the bullet went straight over him. I've set things up a bit differently now. I've got two sandbags, one at the bottom, one in the front, and it gives me a lot more control. So hopefully they come back, because at that distance, 110 meters or so, that should have been a very easy shot. And I stuffed it up. Not wanting to sit stagnant in the same place for too long, we move off to a different location. This part of the country is pretty dry, and so these pivots are goose magnets. The geese actually graze on this grass, and they also defecate in the water troughs, which can cause the cattle to get sick. It's just a matter of finding the geese, and around the next corner, we hit the jackpot with a large flock all congregated about 150 to 200 meters away.
think I got two in one there. Through the neck of the one into the body of the other, I think. And then all the rest fly away. The flock circles back and lands around 350 meters away, so we stay put in the hope of getting another opportunity. 350. So 350 meters, we could shoot from here, but with the wind and with this setup, and not being able to shoot off the roof or something, I think it's best we maybe just drive in. We might scare them away, but hey, it's worth a try. So let's see what we can do. Okay. Got him. Another goose down. Awesome. Look out for cow pets. They're everywhere. So this first one, right there in the neck, I won't show it too close up because I want to keep it PG for YouTube, but um, second one in the chest. So normally with the 22 to 50, because it's such a small varminting bullet that I'm using, a 50 grand VMAX at like 3,800 feet per second, um, that bullet tends to only penetrate a few centimeters and then just shatter into many, many different pieces. So penetration is not good and when you if, if i had to aim on these two birds for chest shots for both of them i'd be hitting the one in the chest and the bullet probably wouldn't even exit out the back so i got lucky here in that i saw the first one's neck in front of the second one's body and i knew if i could thread it through the first one's neck i could that those, those little bullet fragments would hit the second one and switch it off as well so yep got two down it made a very satisfying sound and i didn't actually see both of them drop but I saw that the one at the back didn't fly away, so I knew I'd got both. And these are going into the, 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 the black bag and we, we'll give them to the farm workers for dinner. Um, obviously, we don't want to waste any food. Um, and Egyptian geese, there's quite a bit of meat on these, on these breasts. So these will go to the workers and uh, there'll be some happy guys getting some good uh, meat tonight. The last goose I shot is definitely a lot further than I thought. And that kind of shows the value of the 22 to 50. We didn't really have time to range it. And he's probably 250 to 300 meters away. And I dialed, I think, to 150 or 200 and still smashed him. But yeah, he was further than I thought. Uh, 260 or 300 or any kind of slower moving uh, round would have dropped a bit low. But the 22 to 50 shoots so flat and we got him down. With the sky looking ominous, we decide to call it a day and we drop off the meat at the dairy for the farm workers to take home before heading up the mountain to set up camp. We'll be sleeping in the rooftop tent tonight, which means we'll have to level the vehicle on some rocks. And thankfully, the rain holds off while we get comfortable. Right, so our camp is pretty much set up. Rooftop tent is more or less level. Warning is out in case it rains. We've got meat defrosted out the freezer and we're gonna make a nice uh, fire. I'm just organizing a fire pit with some rocks in a circle to stop any vegetation catching on fire. And we've got an amazing view here over the whole valley. You can see the dairy down below. You can see all the bush and the mountains and we're not too far from the level of the clouds either. So lucky we got the tent set up before the, before the downpour and that's a, a bit of a relief for, for sure. <laughs> Yes, now we're talking. 
those of you who watch uh, my other channel will know that a kind of standard meal for Nicole and I in the <laughs> evenings when we make a fire is uh, meat. It could be a steak, it could be lamb chops, it could be societies or ribs and garlic bread. We always have garlic bread. It's just one of those things where you've got to have some vegetables with your, your meat. So garlic and, and wheat are probably enough vegetables <laughs> for, for us. So that'll, that'll do for today. Hopefully we can get uh yeah get a good start tomorrow and yeah, i think we'll start off with the air guns and maybe focus more on the on the geese with the firearms later in the afternoon but a lot lot of stuff to be done and we're having a great time here this evening weather's not too bad rain has stopped so we're enjoying it so as you know the original plan was to stay in the house with the farmer and while it would have been nice to spend some time with him again, uh, I've got to say I'm glad things turned out the way they did. Um, we haven't had much rain this evening, which is um, ideal. And um, there's nothing better than sitting with a Guinness in one hand and a bright tongs in the other hand, turning steaks <laughs> over, over hot coals. And uh, I've no doubt that we're gonna sleep very well tonight up in the tent. It's gonna be a long day tomorrow. Um, there is rain forecast for the whole day. This awning has changed everything because we can essentially set up underneath the awning park off somewhere put the pigeon decoys out and uh, set up with the air guns on the decoys so i think that's what we're going to try and do and whether it'll work or not well that's that's what we'll discover tomorrow but for now let's get some meat in our stomachs Well, we were hoping that the weather would be slightly better today, but there's only two words to describe what we're seeing this morning. And that is completely miserable. <laughs> it's not even like uh, just short showers of rain coming down. It's just this constant drizzle. And it's a kind of drizzle that even having an awning out like this doesn't really help because the wind just blows it sideways straight into your face. So it's pretty uncomfortable. Um, Coffee's helping a little bit, but um, it's gonna it's gonna take a bit of uh, what's the word motivation to to get everything packed up here, get the guns ready, and actually head out to hunt. Um, we've got essentially a day and a half of hunting still, um, and the weather's not gonna change, so we're gonna have to just knuckle down and, and get it done. Um, but pigeons have to eat, and so do geese, so they'll be out it's just a question of finding them um, and you know having some sort of strategy where we, we're not having to sit out in the in the cold in the wet and become more miserable <laughs> let's just say it like it is but um it should be fun and we can get some down i have no doubt that we will it's just a question of when and how many <laughs> so let's get going It's about 8.30 a.m. by the time we pack up camp, which gives us plenty of time to hunt throughout the rest of the day. We actually take out the air guns first to shoot some doves and sparrows that are causing problems at the dairy, but we'll leave that for a separate episode. This one's about the geese. We make our way back down the mountain road, closer and closer to the pivots, and it's not long until we're back in goose country, surrounded by green grass and dams. With many pivots on this property and no idea where to start, we decided that instead of looking for geese all day, we try to bring the geese to us. <laughs> so, Egyptian goose decoys are known to work very well. Um, it's been a very long time since I've used these, so let's hope they bring us some, some luck today. But essentially, geese flying overhead, um, let's say we drive to a different field and we take a shot at a, at a, at a goose and get one down, the rest of the flock will take off they'll get hit, get into the air and they'll look for a place to land. If they see what they think are other Egyptian geese on another field, they'll assume that, hey, those geese are there, must be a safe space to land and they'll come land. And that's when we will basically keep circling back here, park off here, and hopefully there'll be other geese other than the decoys out there. Hopefully I don't take too many shots at these because they look very realistic, but we'll set them up somewhere out there in the field with a safe backdrop, nothing behind there and uh, we'll hopefully get a few down. So, let's see if this works. The 
wind is actually not bad at all this morning and it isn't long until we come across a flock of geese in need of a good healthy dose of lead. You need to stop moving. We have a target rich environment and I managed to smash a goose but unfortunately my GoPro freezes yet again while trying to record the shot. <sighs> All right, well, it's very muddy here, but here's our goose. Ugh. Wow, this is a nice specimen, actually. If you were trophy hunting, you'd want to go for a goose like this. <laughs> I'm actually not sure I hit him. It looks like I hit him here in the back. I think he was facing away from me. But there you go, bullet in entered the back, and it actually looks like it didn't come out the front. And that's typical of a of a 22 to 50 Remington, fast moving vomiting caliber. Uh, does a great job. So it's another one down and this one will once again go to the farm workers who will definitely appreciate it. So let's take him back to the truck. We head back down to the dam where we'd seen all the ducks the previous day just to give the geese a break and let them settle a bit. And we set up on the bank with the bar pod and sandbag, hoping to get comfortable in a prone position. So we've come back to uh, that dam where we, <laughs> we got caught in the rain yesterday and ended up having some coffee. Um, it's a really promising spot, there's lots of um, waterfowl movement over here, especially with all the reeds along the edges, it provides a perfect spot for them to kind of nest and, and, uh, and hide as well. So lots of activity here, um, there's a lot of coots on the water right now which we're not going after, we're only going after um, Egyptian geese, spurwing geese, yellow bull ducks, and maybe red bull teals. So let's just wait it out and see if anything comes. If we do get an opportunity, then we'll take it. If not, then once again, we'll, we'll move on. Oh, it's definitely, definitely going high. So it could be my my ballistics calibration is off or not able to range them properly. I take some time ranging the ducks and this time it's spot on. Got one. Oh, okay, did you record? Thank goodness. <laughs> so what happened was, first time I ranged, I actually ranged the, the grass on the back side and I ranged it like 350. Dialed for 350, I saw the shot go way high. Second time I ranged, I took more time. Finally got a reading on the on the, the ducks at 290 meters. So this time I dialed correctly and way more spot on. So very happy with that. Now we just have to wait for the wind to blow him this side. It should take a while because <laughs> the wind's not that strong right now, but it'll eventually come back and duck breast is one of the best uh, best beats ever that layer of fat on the duck breast oh it's really good so we'll wait for the wind to blow our, our dinner in okay ready ready okay another duck down we're only allowed to shoot two per day so that's where i stop um bag limit is two but yep let's uh Wait for that one to come here as well, and then that's that's two two ducks. Now, what's nice about the way the ducks swim is normally their breast meat is below the surface of the water. So if you hit them uh, with a vomiting caliber like this, you normally do quite a lot of damage, but you do damage to the upper half of the body. So nine times out of ten, I found that the breast meat is actually still pretty intact, which is great. So hopefully they're still edible. They should be, and that's four duck breasts for us for supper. Back to the pivots we go to check on our decoys, and man, do we see geese or what? The challenge here is firstly to get within range of the geese once they land, which is a challenge in itself because they are used to being shot at, and they don't let us get close. But also, we need to be very aware of what lies behind where we shoot. Not only do we have cows all over the place, this is a dairy after all, but we also have farm workers and vehicles moving about. 
we eventually get an opportunity with a safe backdrop and a make it count. The GoPro dies again, but thankfully only after it has captured the shot. The day comes to an end in a dramatic fashion with the mountains lighting up behind the clouds and the next morning we are back at it with what ends up being gorgeous weather. Now days two and three are really focused on the doves and ground squirrels which you'll see in the coming episodes but we do get one more goose on the morning of day three. Here she is. Last goose down. I think we're going to call it a call it quits there. But awesome to get the final one down from a little bit of an awkward shooting position. But I think I'm happy with that. And how's that for a great way to end a video? An explosion of feathers to represent an explosive few days at the dairy. And all that's left to do now is to collect the last goose and of course to collect the decoys. As always, thanks for watching and please consider subscribing and hitting the notification icon if you'd like to stay up to date with the next few episodes, which are going to be epic. Airgun video is coming up. I'll see you then. If you would like to see the extended version of this video and other extra content like old uploads that YouTube took down or early releases of upcoming episodes, head over to airgun101.com. You'll be able to find many other airgun content creators on the site and a safe place where we can build a community and help each other out. It's a real practical way of supporting content creators like myself without paying a cent as the sponsors of the website help contribute towards the running costs of my channel. Alternatively, you can find me on other social media platforms, on my vlog channel and on Patreon. Thank you so much for the support and I'll see you on the next one.